close your eyes, focus on the breath, know when the breath is coming in, know when it's going out. Make up your mind you're going to stay right here and see how long you can maintain that intention, maintain that determination. And sure enough, something else is going to come along and grab your attention, and you want to go out and look at that and listen to the birds, think about this, plan the meal for the next day, plan what you're going to eat in a few minutes, all kinds of things the mind could be thinking about. But you say, no, not right now, not right now. I've got something more important to do. And try to maintain that intention. Don't give in. Because the mind is like a committee. It's got lots of voices, lots of ideas, and you want to make sure that once you've got a really good idea, you don't want it to lose out to the other ones. If you start losing out to your greed, aversion, and delusion, can you, you've lost a big battle. As the Buddha said, if you can beat a thousand people in the world, a thousand people outside, it's not nearly as important as beating one person, i.e. yourself, coming out victorious over your own greed, and ang anger, and delusion. And so you have to be very careful about this. So you've got to strengthen your forces, and strengthen the forces of what's good. And this is why we develop mindfulness and concentration, discernment. The mindfulness is there to remind us of what really is important in life and what needs to be done in order to attain what's important. You couple that with alertness, watching yourself, knowing what you're actually doing, so that other things don't start slipping in. You maintain concentration so you have a sense of well-being and ease here in the present moment, so it's a lot easier to do what you know what you should do. And then the discernment that knows how to cut through all the different defilements when they come up. The important thing about discernment is not something you read in books, but sometimes we think about Buddhist wisdom, it's these nice little cute little sayings. Or it's a vocabulary lesson. The Buddhist talks about the five aggregates. He talks about the Four Noble Truths, so I have to figure out what the words mean. But wisdom really means the ability to see that there's something you like doing, but you know that it's going to get bad results, and you can say no to it. Or there's something you don't like doing, but you know it's going to give good results if you do it, and so you can talk yourself into doing it. In other words, your wisdom has to be strategic for it to really count. This is where you see it happening. Anger comes up in the mind, and you just give right in. All you can think about is how really horrible that other person was, what they did, and you can start elaborating on that, and you just go on and on and on. And who's lost? You lost. So when anger comes up, you've got to remind yourself, anger doesn't serve any purpose. If you see something's wrong and you can correct it, then you go ahead and you do that. But the anger doesn't help. In fact, anger gets in the way for you can see clearly what's wrong and what really would be effective. And so when the anger comes up, you've got to remind yourself you can't have ill will for other people. What do you gain from seeing other people suffer? You don't gain anything at all, except some really cheap forms of pleasure. But it doesn't really accomplish anything. And usually when other people are suffering, it doesn't just stop right there. Once they've suffered, then they're going to try to get back at you or get back at somebody. So that kind of attitude goes nowhere at all. So remind yourself, you want to have goodwill for everybody. It doesn't mean you have to like people, just you have goodwill. You wish them well. May they be happy. If you see them doing something unskillful, you want to correct them if you can, and if you can't, well, you just leave it up to karma. And that way you come out ahead, because your anger hasn't taken over and you've been able to have a victory over yourself. Even if you can't have victory over the other people, it's important that you have victory over yourself, because that's the victory that really counts. The victory we hear about sports teams and armies and other things, that really doesn't settle anything at all just keeps the world stirred up. But the victory that you do over yourself, that makes the world a better place. That really does accomplish something. So when you find your mind wandering off, say it may seem to be a little tiny thing, but remind yourself, the victory over that little wandering off mind, that's more important than all the victories outside. And so be careful and watch out and have a sense of accomplishment when you've been able to keep the mind where you wanted it to, because it really is important that you can do this. Because the mind can bring us the most help that you can think of, but it also can bring the most harm. And it's when you train it, that's when it brings you the help that you need.